Good morning, Paul Georgie from Allendale. It's uh, December 19th, Thursday morning, and uh, grain markets are slightly higher as we speak, uh, probably on uh, bargain hunting and uh, position squaring is about the best guess at this point. Uh, after yesterday's sell-off, uh, seeing a, a little bit of buying coming in here uh, ahead of the uh, USDA's weekly export sales report. Now, the trade's looking for somewhere in that uh, 550 to 750,000 uh, metric tons of corn being sold and uh, looking at 700 to 900 on the uh, on the soybeans. So those are numbers that could uh, influence the market here at 730. Uh, other news, uh, South American weather continues to be favorable and and the latest weather forecast is for more of the same. The uh, uh, models are suggesting that uh, Argentina will get some rain and uh, the uh, Brazil areas that have been real wet should dry out some, allow for some uh, further planting progress. So uh, continuing to uh, be on pace to have a record production out of uh, South America this year. Weather in the U.S. Uh, patterns there suggest that no bitter cold is uh, going to affect the uh, winter wheat areas, and that's continuing to uh, put some uh, pressure on the uh, on the wheat market as world supplies of wheat continue to uh, to be large. We did have uh, Iraq uh, buy 350,000 tons of wheat overnight, uh, all Australian wheat, so U.S missed out on that again simply because our prices are higher than uh, the rest of the world. Uh, Argentina exporters are waiting for some kind of an announcement from the government to allow them to uh, start shipping 1.6 million tons of wheat uh, that uh, is expected to uh, most of it to go to Brazil. Brazil sitting in a situation where if they don't get this Argentina wheat very soon, they're going to have to buy some uh, elsewhere around the world, and uh, that could leave uh, Argentina out of the mix completely uh, if uh, if they buy elsewhere. So that's uh, another factor that's uh, weighing on this uh, this wheat market uh, as uh, we go into the end of the year. The uh, ethanol production yesterday running 10% higher than a year ago levels. That is. Uh, Higher than what the USDA is projecting, they're running their uh, projection even with the 50 million metric tons uh, increase in uh, usage is only 6.5 percent above a year ago levels. And Pharma came out with some numbers yesterday. They did raise the corn acres a little bit and lowered the soybean acres by 1.9 million acres, which uh, initially was friendly, and then. Uh, Traders uh, looked at other factors in yesterday's market and started, uh, started to sell this market off. The QE3 uh, announcement, tapering of the QE3 uh, by the Fed, announced yesterday uh, $10 billion on a monthly basis, less than what they uh, currently have been doing. Uh, that was in line with what trade was expecting, and uh, we did see a lot of volatility there. Uh, in the, uh, the financial markets after this report, but uh, still in line with what uh, what trade was expecting. In the livestock trade, we've got cattle on feed report uh, tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, expecting uh, placements to be below a year, or excuse me, placements could be uh, equal to higher than a year ago because they were uh, going to be up against some very small numbers a year ago. The total on feed number, 95.4% is what the trade average is. Uh, that just tells us that for the next several months, we've got less cattle to uh, to come to market in some very tight supplies. So it uh, should be providing some underlying support to this futures market. However, the problem that we've got in the futures contracts uh, and uh, in the outlook here in the near term is we've got uh, competitive meets uh, taking uh, the spotlight at the uh, retail counter that's pressing uh, the uh, product values and uh, cash cattle uh, values yesterday traded at 129 which would be a dollar lower than uh, than last week and two dollars lower in some areas only a light amount of cattle did trade at this however but uh, the uh, 
the concern there is we've got a, a short work week next week and the following week, and packers do not need as many uh, cattle to uh, to process and therefore uh, able to uh, play a little hardball here and get cattle bought uh, cheaper. So hopefully that we can uh, we can get through this next two weeks without uh, damaging the uh, technical picture in the uh, the cattle and uh, hog complex. Uh, much worse than it is. So uh, if we can consolidate here, it looks like there's uh, uh, brighter times ahead. But uh, again, we've got some uh, some work to do here for the next uh, 10 to 12 trading sessions. The pork cutout values under pressure again yesterday, down $1.98. Cash hogs were weaker yesterday. Hog weights continue to uh, uh, be heavy. And uh, with the the short work week ahead of us. We've got more hogs that uh, will uh, not be uh, going to slaughter, and therefore the likelihood of uh, those hogs being heavier uh, will uh, also uh, create some uh, some bigger supplies with a, an already uh, struggling demand. So uh, a lot of things going on. A lot of reasons to stay in touch with Allendale's research. I want to remind everybody the Allendale conference is uh, coming up here the end of January. Uh, we would uh, like to have you uh, join us. Uh, we're going to do it online this year, which is uh, allowing you to uh, watch it from your uh, home and uh, not have to travel to uh, the Chicago area. So if you got any questions, never hesitate to give us a call here at Allendale at 800 262 We wish everybody a very successful trading day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thank you.